Please open your missalettes to page 110 for our entrance antiphon. Page 110. Today is Monday, May 11th. Please stand. The good shepherd has risen who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And so, today um, we're having burials at St. Mary's Cemetery. And so I would like to especially... Remember these individuals that are being buried today. They've already had their funerals during the winter, but uh, it's beautiful to keep them in mind and heart. Roberta Fleming, Michael David Grant, Joshua Grant, which was a, a baby, and Jesse Lavalle. And I feel bad. Uh, last Monday, we had the St. Louis Cemetery burials, which was also four burials, and... Um, just to say them so you can remember them as well. Julie Peltier, Donna Baker, Linda Patra, and Janice Peach. So for all of these, we keep them in our hearts in special prayers today. Today's Mass intention is for the repose of the soul of Linda Bustad. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to Lyconian, cities of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding countryside, where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, 
stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul's Hermes because he was the chief speaker and the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he together with the people intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out to the crowd shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of, are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you the good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways, yet in bestowing his goodness. He did not leave himself without witness, for he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, there's a conversation that I have at least five times a year, and it goes kind of like this. Somebody brings it up about what is our relationship supposed to be with God. And I tell them, our whole church faith is built around this, about loving God with all we have and having this personal relationship with Him. And then they usually go to the next step, which they say, well then, Father, I can do that at home. I can confess straight to God. I can watch the Mass on TV. I can pray at home. Why do I have to come to Sunday Mass? And that's when I always bring up today's gospel. And I say, Jesus says, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And he says this a lot of different times through scripture. He says, who are my family? The ones that hear God's word and do it. And I've said this before, usually doing what God wants isn't what you want. That's usually a good indication to know you're doing the right thing. And so, to love God is to follow the church's teaching. To come to Sunday Mass, well, maybe not right now, we're under a dispensation, but when you come to Sunday Mass, especially if you don't want to be there, but you do it anyway, how much love are you showing to God? Because he's asking that of you. Today in our readings, we have two types of people being analyzed. The people that love God and are constantly listening, what should I do next? And the people that are keeping God at arm's length. So in our first reading, we have Peter, we have Barnabas and Paul preaching in Lystra. Preaching to pagans, people that have multiple gods, usually Zeus and Poseidon, or they would call them Neptune and Jupiter in the Roman. And they don't want to have faith. So there's two things that these, the people will do. They'll either not listen, or they will put their values on top of the Christian values. They want to worship Paul and Barnabas. And Paul and Barnabas, no, 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 no. And yet they still won't believe Paul and Barnabas. They still think Paul and Barnabas are gods. It's kind of ironic. If this was Jesus, that would be perfect. If Jesus was there in the flesh, they could worship him. But for all of us, we have to continually point that everything's coming from Jesus. And so that brings us to the people with faith. The people that are saying, what can I do next? And what we learn about them is that they are transformed to look like Jesus. They do Jesus' actions. Jesus lifted someone who was lame from birth, and so did Paul and Barnabas. But it wasn't Paul and Barnabas doing it. It was Jesus through them. It's Jesus through all of us. And that's a huge difference. But nonetheless, Paul and Barnabas look like Jesus. And they're persecuted like Jesus. They do what they don't want to do, what God's asking them to do, like Jesus. But there's one thing I want to point out. In the first part of the first reading, they're running from being killed. Sometimes people think, when I give my life to God, <laughs> I'm going to be killed. I need to go to the Muslim countries. I need to go to the places where I'm not supposed to be. A Christian follows God, whatever God wants, not what we want. But Jesus ran for a long time from being crucified. And he only went to Jerusalem to die when it was appointed. Paul and Barnabas today run from crucifixion, run from being stoned and killed. They only are martyred when they are called to be martyred. The life of a Christian is not living what we want, but what God wants. But God doesn't want us to die, usually. That's a special calling, a red martyrdom. Most of us are white martyrs, meaning 
We die to ourselves each and every day to do what God wants us to do, but that's usually not death. <laughs> and if death is on your mind, maybe God is starting to call you that way, but I don't recommend it just yet. And so, my brothers and sisters, as Christ's followers, we have to continually say yes to him, just like Our Lady did. Do it, be it done unto me, whatever you say, not what I say. And put those things into action. And it makes us look like Jesus, but our message will always be, it's not me doing it, it's him. <laughs> if you want the joy I have, come to church. If you want to do things like I am doing, come and get to know Christ. He's the one doing them. A Christian is most known by their life, by their joy, and by their example. It's putting what God asks into practice that speaks the most, not the words of our mouths. And so we're all encouraged to be disciples like Paul and Barnabas. That doesn't mean <laughs> we're going to look to die. It just means we're going to look to listen and put whatever God's asking into action. God love you. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his be beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our own community and all the communities that, of those that are watching, that we may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for it into the coronavirus, for all of our leaders, for all those that are suffering and affected by this virus, especially our elderly and those in our nursing homes. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those that will be buried today at St. Mary Cemetery, especially Roberta Fleming, Michael David Grant, Joshua Grant, and Jesse Lavalle. We also remember those that were buried last Monday in St. Louis Cemetery, Julie Peltier, Donna Baker, Linda Putra, and Janice Peach. For the repose of their souls, may they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Linda Bustad, let us pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray? Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions of those that are watching, especially the intentions that they write out in Facebook, and for all the intentions we keep in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. And peace to everyone else. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Thou wilt say the word, and my soul shall be pure. The communion antiphon. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. And so for those of you receiving communion, for everyone in the church, I s please stay in your pews and I will come to you. We ask that you receive in the hand and stretch out as far as you can for me to give you communion. Um, for those of you that are in Dunseeth and would like to receive communion after Mass, I will be in the parking lot for the 10 minutes after Mass. I have to leave to do burials about 30 minutes after Mass, so I can't make promises to be here for a whole hour after Mass today. But if you can be here within 30 minutes, I can accommodate, but please be here within 10 minutes. That helps me a, a great deal. And for those of you watching that um, are not around Dunseeth, but would like spiritual communion, I will be starting up today saying the spiritual communion prayer with you again. Thank you. And for those of you at home that are able and wish to receive spiritual communion, let us say together, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Thank you all for coming. I'll remind you to please put your kneelers down so that we know where to clean after this Mass. And also, um, if you find yourself going out the doors, uh, Jeremy's going to open the doors. If you find yourself going out the doors with a lot of people, just make sure you social distance. We had a, there's not many people here today, but we had some clumping at the doors a little bit. And so, again, we're always trying to make things just a little safer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And happy Monday, everyone. Have a wonderful week. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness.